Welcome back, Wargamers. So I'm making a Saxon village for some Saga and some Dukes Britanniorum and maybe even some Tribal. So I'm making these little um, Waddle and Dob, Dob huts. And I was trying to find a kind of a quick and efficient way to make a thatch roof. Um, I've used faux fur in the past, and it's kind of time consuming. You really have to make sure you, you saturate the fur with paint and also you have to, it's hard to blend it, it's time consuming. And I also considered sculpting the thatch out of milliput, but sculpting clay is kind of expensive. Uh, I don't think it's that easy to work with, so I thought, well, why don't I just use my, uh, my latex caulk that I pretty much make all my terrain out of. And I was quite impressed with the results that I got from using this caulk. The paste-like consistency of the caulk meant it was really easy to work with I just used a sharpened barbecue skewer to kind of run across the roof to make the thatched effect and it was very cheap and quick it took me maybe five minutes to make the roof uh, and this latex caulk is two bucks for a tube that can make you a dozen roofs so it's a uh, I think this is a, a nice cheap easy quick method of making a decent looking thatch roof so all I'm gonna do for this I'm gonna take some caulk and I'm, I already have set kind of a base layer down you don't really have to do that on another roof I just ignored that step but anyways you're gonna want to put down um, a decent layer of caulk you don't want it too thick if your caulk is too thick then you will find that when you're working with your skewer you're gonna make some weird effects so now I'll show you the process in which I make my thatch roof I'm just taking a my barbecue skewer here and making some diagonal and vertical lines all over the roof. Uh, you'll want to make sure you wipe off your skewer uh, periodically. It will accumulate a lot of caulk. And if you begin to get an effect that you're not pleased with, it's easy just to use your finger and kind of wipe off that section and redo it. You'll see me do that several times as we're as I'm making this side of the roof. I'll, I'll get kind of this weird effect and I'll just wipe it and kind of start over in that section. And as you can see, this is quick easy and I think it, it you'll get the same kind of effects of uh, techniques that take a lot more time and effort. And now that we've finished this simple thatched roof I'm going to move on to a more advanced technique of making a tiered thatch roof that you often see on dark age buildings and Saxon buildings of the time. It will require you to wait for the different layers to dry before you can add the additional layers onto it, but it's it's not overly complex. And so here we have this Saxon longhouse, and I'm basically going to follow the steps of the pre previous video for my first layer. I'm just going to cover it in a modest amount of caulk, and I will be using a shish kebab skewer to mark out the thatch on the roof. All right, you you kind of want the first layer for these for the tiered building to be pretty thin so that it will be easier to to stack the caulk onto this and I realized also while I was making this first layer that an easier way of creating this tiered effect may have been to create the different tiers of the thatch by laying down some cardboard or even uh, poster board or balsa wood to create the, that kind of stepped effect and then just put one layer of caulk over that but uh, again that was kind of a late revelation for me so if you're trying this at home and you want to even do a kind of a quicker uh, version of this then you know create your tiers beforehand and then put the caulk over it but here we go I'm pretty much done with this first layer um, I'll come back and show you how I added the second tier of the thatch on there once this layer dries So here you see the finished product of just a single one layer of thatch kind of building. Um, but as I make my second tier on this long house, I'm going to actually put down more caulk than the first layer. I want there to be kind of that distinctive step, distinctive uh, separate layer there. So I'm going to make it a little bit more, um, more heavy on the caulk. So again, I'm just spreading it across with my finger, trying my best to get a nice 
even coat. If there's a little irregularity uh, as far as uh, how far down the second layer goes, don't worry about it. It'll look fine. I mean, thatch is kind of irregular by nature. All right, so again, I've, I've smoothed it out now. I'm going to go back with my shish kebab skewer and go and create the thatched effect. Same process as before. Since the caulk is a little bit thicker, you will be needing to wipe off excess caulk quite often. And again, if I were to do this building again, I probably would have put down some balsa wood to represent that second layer, and even the third layer, and then just put one layer of caulk above it. Um, I think it would have been quicker, because it was kind of a pain to get the effect that I wanted by layering the caulk on there, and you had to, of course, let it dry. But anyways, that's just maybe a tip for, tip for you to try on your own. So here we have the second layer has dried, and I'm going to put on kind of my final layer of thatch, the third tier here, which is just a very slight layer, just really covering the very tops of the building. Again, I'm going to put a, a very thick layer of caulk on the top so you get a really distinctive final layer of thatch and use the same technique that you've seen, just using that shish kebab skewer to make the thatch effect. Um, it will take a little bit longer to dry with these thicker layers. But once it finally dries, we'll then go and I'm going to put down a, a layer of black enamel paint as primer, and then I will uh, start with the base coating it brown, and then I'll show the overbrushing, at least a few layers of overbrushing to get a nice contrast for, among the thatch. So anyways, I'll show you now what happened when it dried and I began the painting process. Alright, so here is my little Saxon building after I've put down my primer, my black primer, and then I base coated it in a dark burnt umber brown. And then I went and just did one little light over brushing of a uh, green ochre, kind of this dark yellow green and for my next layer of overbrushing I'm going to use a kind of mid-tone yellow a Naples yellow and I'm going to just overbrush the entire roof getting all of the kind of tops of the thatch I'm gonna be working my way up to a buff titanium I want the tops of the thatch to be very light with the brown showing through and all the creases so just like any time you overbrush, uh, I'm not actually going to wipe off much paint like you would for dry brushing since there's such deep cracks in between the thatch. You can really load your brush up and just run it across like this and only hit the tops. So I will go ahead and speed it up as I pretty much uh, cover my entire roof with this color. And now I'm really only going to do very few layers with this dry brushing. You can go all out and do really subtle tone changes to get a nice gradation in color. But I like quick and easy, and I'm lazy. So um, here's kind of my second to last layer I'm going to put down. For my final overbrushing layer, I mixed in some buff titanium into my Naples yellow to give it kind of a, a light yellow beige color and I will overbrush this over the tops of all the all the thatch on the roof and it will give it this nice uh, nice kind of contrast between the really dark brown and the yellow and this beige color and for all my roofs I think I'm going to use this process of base coating it with a brown I think it gives it a deeper color before I just did a deep dark yellow with beige on top um, but I like the look of this more. So uh, my last step will be I will I'll dry brush so I'll actually wipe off most of the paint from my brush and only do the highest highlight with a pure titanium buff color uh, to give it that final kind of pop on the roof. Alright so I will go ahead after this video and kind of show you what the what the finished product looked like and I think it turned out well. Alright so here are my two Saxon buildings. I'm really pleased with how they turned out. I try to use two different color palettes for each of the buildings. For my single layered thatched roof I use more of a yellow based color palette. While for my multi staged uh, thatched roof here I used more browns and grays 
and I actually think I prefer that palette. It's a little bit warmer, has a little bit more depth to it. Um, but I, I am really pleased how this kind of caulk technique turned out. I was a little skeptical, but I really wanted an alternative to kind of uh, your, your usual techniques of faux fur and sculpting clay. I think it was much quicker, and I, I kind of like the uh, like the deep recesses and, and kind of the texture that the thatch roof has with the caulk. Um, but anyways, uh, these buildings too are are from war bases. I didn't actually build them from scratch. I love warbases.com. You can get MDF for like four or five dollars for each building, and uh, and for me, I really really do not want to spend hours just making the the base for my building making the kind of foundation I'd rather spend a few bucks and then just add to it spruce it up to my liking which is what I did with these MDF buildings um, but I'll, I'll provide a link for them they are a great resource and probably in the future I'll kind of show a from scratch build on uh, how you can take these MDF buildings and and make them a little look a little bit better with minimal effort. And for my future tutorial videos, I'm going to focus on um, terrain building that is cheap, it is quick, but also of high quality. I have two young kids. I don't have time to spend um, an inordinate amount of time on my terrain. Uh, so for me, finding any sort of technique that can uh, get me quite quite good effects, but without breaking the bank or taking hours and hours, uh, I, I find that to be uh, immensely useful. So my tutorials will never be of the quality of uh, the Terrain Tutor or some of the really great terrain builders out there on YouTube. Hopefully at least for your average wargamer you'll pick up a few techniques that will allow you to get some terrain and miniatures on the table as quickly as possible so that you can get a few games in. After all, that's why we do this. So, last thing. I'm just going to show you the type of caulk that I use in my wargaming uh, terrain and, and basing. And that is just this latex caulk. Uh, it's acrylic base, so it's easy to paint on. So anyways, hopefully you found this informative. And I will see you next time.